Among the many achievements of the Gupta kings, one could also include the minting of beautiful coins. These coins are not only the finest example of Gupta art, but it is from these coins we also learn about the Gupta rulers and their history. And sometimes it is from these coins we can also learn some aspect of the Gupta history which otherwise would have remained forgotten. From the region of Eastern UP, archaeologists have found some interesting Gupta coins. When we analyze these coins, we find that these coins were issued by a Gupta king whose name was Kach. This discovery wouldn't have meant anything if we have not found a similar name in the Prashasti of Samudragupta. Now, when we analyze this Prashasti of Samudragupta that is currently situated in Prayagraj, we find that the verses 4 and 5 talk about someone called Kechita. But sadly, this part of the inscription is badly damaged. So we can only make out that this Kechit was defeated by Samudragupta in a battle. Another line of these verse talk about repentance and good feeling, but for whom we do not know. But when we look at the verse above this, that is the third verse, we find that in this verse, Harishen, the author of this Prashasti, talks about the circumstance in which Samudragupta ascended the Gupta throne. We are told by Harishen that Samudragupta's father, Chandragupta, had assembled the full royal court. And it was in this royal court, we are told that Chandragupta, with tears of joy and sparkling with emotion, embraced Samudragupta and exclaimed, Come, come, rule this whole world. So that is how, according to Harishen, Samudragupta became the next Gupta king. Now one thing is very clear is that it was in Chandragupta's lifetime that Samudragupta ascended the Gupta throne. One question which is raised by some scholars is that why did Samudragupta thought that it was necessary to describe in such vivid detail how he became the Gupta king and how Chandragupta, his father, chose him to become the next Gupta ruler. So if we keep this question in mind and reanalyze the Samudragupta's Prashasti, we find that the verse 3 talks about how Chandragupta chose Samudragupta to become the next Gupta ruler. Then we have the verses 4 and 5 in which we are told that some Kechit revolted and there is also some talks about good feeling and repentance. Now we are not sure for whom these lines are addressed but it does tell us that there was some sort of problems that Samudragupta had to face when he ascended the Gupta throne. Now, coming to the question of coins from which we have started this video, we find that it is from the region of Eastern UP, we have some coins that have the name Kacha. Now, you have all guessed that this Kach is similar to the name that appears in verse 4 and 5 of Samudragupta's Pasasti, which is Kechit. So, the fact that Kechit and Kach have some similarity raises certain questions. And if we believe Sri Ram Goyal, he argues that when Samudragupta ascended the Gupta throne, there was some sort of a revolt. And this revolt was led by a person named Kach, who was the brother of Samudragupta. If we elaborate this theory of Sri Ram Goyal's, he argues that when Chandragupta married Kumar Devi, there was some sort of a tension in the Gupta court. What happened was that after the marriage of Chandragupta and Kumar Devi, there was this merger of two traditions. The first was the monarchical tradition which was represented by the Guptas. The second was the non-monarchical tradition which was represented by the Lichavis. And this tradition goes back to around the 6th century BC when in the same region where Lichavi used to reside in the Gupta period, there was once the famous Ganasangha of Vrijji. So the fact that after the marriage, these two traditions collided in the Gupta court. Then we find that the Lichavis are also described as Vratya, which means unorthodox or impure in the Dharmashastra. So when we look at the complete picture, we find that after the marriage between Chandragupta and Kumar Devi, 
the Gupta court is divided between two camps. The first camp favored the alliance between the Lichavis and the Guptas, thinking that it would ultimately benefit the Guptas in their rise. The second camp, on the other hand, opposed this alliance with the Lichavis, thinking that the Lichavis presented a non-monarchical tradition and they were also considered impure and unorthodox by the texts. So what we see is that the first group who favored the alliance with the Lichavis wanted Samudra Gupta, who was the son of Kumar Devi, to become the next Gupta ruler. Whereas the second group opposed the accession of Samudra Gupta. Now it is very clear from the inscription that Chandra Gupta wanted Samudra Gupta to become the next Gupta ruler because he knew that when Samudra Gupta ascends the Gupta throne, only then Lichavis would support the Gupta kingdom. And for the rise of the Guptas, the support of the Lichavis was necessary. And that is why we see that Chandragupta chose Samudragupta to become the next Gupta ruler. And it was this incident that is described in the Prayagraj Prashasti of Samudragupta when Chandragupta chose Samudragupta to become the next Gupta ruler. So now what happened to Kach? One thing is clear that this revolt of Kach happened after Samudragupta's accession because in Prayag Prashasti, in the verse, we have the incident of how Samudragupta became the next Gupta king. Whereas verse 4 and 5 talks about some sort of a disturbance. So it is clear that Kach revolted after Samudragupta had become the Gupta king. Now, when we look at other sources, we find that interestingly to other texts that can tell us more about Kacha's rebellion. So first we have a Buddhist text that dates back to around 8th century AD, where we have some reference to Kach. Now this text is Arre Manju Shri Moolakalp. And according to Sri Ram Goel, there is this discussion of a anti-Buddhist king whose name is Bhasma. And according to Sri Ram Goel, this Bhasma is our Kach. So what Sri Ram Goel argues is that the camp which opposed the accession of Samudra Gupta was anti-Buddhist because the Lichavis were considered closer to the Buddhist tradition. And this uh, Bhasma of R. Manjushri Kalp was anti-Buddhist and our Kach is also anti-Buddhist. So this is what Sri Ram Goel tell us about R. Manjushri Kalp. Now one question which comes to mind when we look at this argument of Sri Ram Goel is that why did the author of R. Manjushri Mool Kalp use the name Bhasma? He should have used the name Kach itself. So according to Sriram Goyal, when we analyze this text, we find that the different name appears for different anti-Buddhist king. So for example, Mihirkul, who was famous for being anti-Buddhist, had the name Graha. And Shashank of God, who is also described as anti-Buddhist, has the name Som. So that is why we see that uh, Kach has the name Bhasma. So this is one text in which, according to Sri Ram Goel, there is some reference to Kach. Then we find that the Chinese Chuanzhang also talks about a anti-Buddhist king of Shravasti. And this anti-Buddhist king, according to Zhuangzhang, was defeated by the patron of Vasubandhu. Now, according to the present consensus, historians believe that the patron of Vasubandhu was none other than Samudragupta. So the fact that Xuanzang is telling us that uh, this anti-Buddhist king who ruled from Shravasti was later defeated by the patron of Vasubandhu means that it was Samudragupta who defeated this anti-Buddhist king of Shravasti. And according to Sri Ram Goel, this means that this anti-Buddhist king of Shravasti was Kach and he was defeated by Samutrugo. Now, if we believe that what Yuan Zhang is telling us is true, then we can also get some more information from Yuan Zhang. So first thing is clear is that this anti-Buddhist king had the capital of Shravasti. Then we find that according to Yuan Zhang, this king ruled for three years. So, according to Sri Ram Goel, when we look at these two references from R. Manjushri Mulkalp and Zhuangzhang, 
we find that Kach rebelled after Samudragupta had ascended the Gupta throne. Then after having rebelled, he made Shravasti his capital and from there he ruled for three years and finally he was defeated by Samudragupta. Now when we analyze the coins of Kach, we find that these coins only appear in eastern UP region. So it appears that the revolt of Kach was restricted to the heart of Gupta territory. Now when we look at these coins, we find that these coins are not rare and they are also not found in abundance. So it appears that in the three years, uh, Kach was able to issue some of his coins. So this is what Sri Ram Goel has to argue. Now there are other scholars who have raised objection to this theory. They argue that Kach was the name of Samudragupta. It was either his less formal name or it was his name which he abandoned when he became the Gupta king. Now this argument does not really hold ground because when we analyze the Gupta coins, we find that there is no other Gupta ruler who issued coins in his less informal name or in his original name as these historians argue. Because when we analyze the Gupta coins, we find that two types of names appear in the various Gupta coins. So for example, we have the coin of Kumar Gupta in which the name Kumar Gupta appears and then there is also the Aditya name of some of the Gupta kings which appears in the coins. So for Kumar Gupta, the name is Mahindra Aditya. So in his coins, we find that the name Kumar Gupta is there and the name Mahindra Aditya is also present. So if we look at the coins of Kumar Gupta, we see that the name Mahindra Aditya appears on the reverse of the coin. Whereas the name Kumar appears on the obverse. So what is obverse? Obverse is the side of the coin on which the face of the ruler appears. So on obverse, we find that the name Kumar appears. Now when we look at the coin of Kach, we see that the name Kach appears on the obverse, the place where the main name of the Gupta rulers is present. So we have seen that in the coins of Kumar Gupta, on the obverse, we have the name Kumar. So what does it tell us? This tells us that the name Kach was not the less formal name or second name of Samudragupta. Now some historians have presented a different theory. They argue that these coins are medal coins and they were issued by Samudragupta in the memory of one of his brothers whose name was Kach but there was no rebellion that took place. Now if we believe that this theory is true then it would mean that there were other Gupta kings who had also issued similar type of medal coins. But we find that no Gupta king issued medal coins in the name of his brothers. So why did only Samudragupta chose to issue medal coins that bears the name of one of his brothers? I personally believe that the story of this revolt of Kach is true. But like many topics of ancient Indian history, we have to wait for more evidence to finally say whether a revolt happened or not. But what is clear is that even if there was a revolt, finally Samudragupta was able to quell this revolt and he became the sole ruler of the Gupta kingdom. It was in his reign that the amalgamation of the Lichavi territory and the Gupta territory took place. Now if you want to know about how Chandragupta and Kumar Devi, the house of the Lichavis and the Guptas came into matrimonial alliance and what were the circumstances during this period, please watch this video. Thank you for watching.